Chicken pot pie. This is something that I grew up with as a kid and I will always remember grabbing those little 75 cent chicken pot pies out of the freezer aisle. And today we're gonna elevate that game and make a chicken curry roti pot pie, kinda. Good morning fellow foodies, my name is Chef PK here on Chef Paul Makes and today we are making Hayama's chicken pot pie from Food Wars. This was voted by you guys as the curry dish you wanted to see. We are gonna take some freedoms with it and kind of make it our own just as he does to be able to really use up some extra ingredients you have laying around the house. And before we get started, this video is brought to you by, well, my wife and I. We've been making headbands and t-shirts, so if you guys wanna pick one up for yourself, check out the links below at chefpk.bigcartel.com. We make everything by hand and it really does support the channel so we can continue to make videos like this. I am pretty proud of these t-shirts. Look at me, I'm full on you can hear a Diner now. With that being said, let's jump into making our very own chicken curry pot pie. And before we get started we have to understand that Hayama kind of does an anime workaround with his dish. He's able to create that crispy roti shell on top of the curry. However from my experience with making naan or roti you do really need that incredibly hot oven. That tandoori oven does reach upwards of a thousand degrees in some cases and the principle is, is that you take your dough and you slap it on the inside of the oven and it starts blistering it immediately. However when he puts that dough on top of his pot pie you create more steam than dry heat from underneath it. We're going to try to circumvent this by creating a very hot oven. I think ours goes up to about 500 degrees, but also keeping the curry hot before we place the dough on top of it and immediately throwing it in the oven. This will allow the dough to cook very rapidly without really creating too much more moisture on the inside. I don't know if it's gonna work, but I hope it does. I go ahead and chop up three carrots and three potatoes for this mirepoix. And of course, we need some garlic. And remember at the beginning of this video, I did mention we are using leftover ingredients. So instead of the really nice red snapper, which I actually looked for and I had a really hard time finding anything decent, I'm gonna go with some really good all natural free range chicken breast. We're gonna dice this up into again, smaller cubes, dredge it in a little bit of spice, which I'll show you in a second and then start searing it off. Here is my beautifully diced chicken. Again, I kept them somewhat bite-sized so that way you can fit all of these things on a single spoon when you go to eat it. I'm gonna hit this chicken with a little bit of olive oil, black pepper, salt, and my curry spice blend. I'm gonna be perfectly honest with you. I have no idea what's in this. All I know is that my parents brought this for me the last time they visited. It was in a marked jar that said curry on it and it tastes great. So we're gonna go with this. Now we have our vegetables and we have our protein ready to go. The first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start searing off the chicken. Now the reason why I'm searing off the chicken first is because I want my pan incredibly hot for that sear. If I were to do my vegetables first and start cooking those and then put the chicken on top of them, since I want that nice hard sear, we're gonna go with chicken first with a little bit of peanut oil to really have a high smoke. Once the chicken has a nice sear, we're gonna go ahead and throw our vegetables on top of it and then add our liquids and start getting ready to make our actual curry sauce. Once you have some nice color on your chicken, go ahead and add in all of your vegetables. We're gonna re-season all of the vegetables. Now for the liquids. While this is cooking, you have to decide on what kind of liquid you want. And beforehand, I decided I actually want a little bit of coconut milk as well as chicken stock for this pot pie. The reason for that is I wanted that creaminess of the coconut milk so that way when we add the roux, it's actually going to thicken it really nicely and give it a very rich flavor and texture. So first things first, we're gonna add our chicken stock to deglaze it, then add our coconut milk and let the entire thing simmer for a bit so that way the potatoes actually cook. Now that we have all of the liquid in our pot pie, we're gonna bring this up to a light boil, bring it down to a simmer and throw a lid on it until those potatoes are cooked. Once the potatoes are cooked, we're gonna go ahead and add our roux, which we're gonna make right now. With this, I'm actually not quite sure how much roux I'm going to need to thicken the entire thing. So I'm gonna eyeball it, but I am gonna go off of that same measurement. All you're gonna need for roux is unsalted butter and some AP flour. You wanna go ahead and melt all of your butter down before adding in any of your flour.
While everything's cooking, I just want to say a big thank you to all my fellow foodies out there. I don't think I'd be as hyped up to do this stuff without you guys. And I will say being able to make some of these dishes from Food Wars has gotten me really excited about food. It's always been a passion of mine, but I'm glad I can do it this way. If you're new to the channel, consider subscribing. We do videos like this every single week. Let's make some pot pie. Now that we have our curry made and our roux done, we have to tackle the dough. Luckily for me, I make a lot of dough at work. This is a very basic yeasted dough. Yeast, water, flour, butter, salt. Nothing too crazy in this thing. But the challenge is getting this over our crock pot and able to fit into our oven at 525 degrees and allow it to kind of poof up. I have my reservations about how this is gonna work out, but we're gonna give it our best shot. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna lay this out on our cutting board with a bunch of flour and get it as thin as we can without really breaking the dough too hard. What I'm going for is something that looks similar to this. I want to be able to drape it over the sides, which we're going to clean up after we actually place it. And I want a very, very, very thin membrane with your dough. So that way it'll actually crisp up nicely. We're going to have to let this relax before we play with it anymore. And we're going to turn these into some pita to eat on the side. Now that we have our top dough piece laid out for this, I'm actually going to take this and throw it back in the fridge. So that way it firms up just a little bit. So when we drape it over the top, it doesn't immediately sink into our pot pie. Our potatoes are cooked. It is time to add the roux. Now pro tip for roux, take some of your liquid out of your soup or your broth and put it into your roux first to get a nice blend. We added just a little bit of our roux and you can already see it's starting to thicken up really nicely. We want to actually take it just a bit further than this and we didn't even use all of that roux. You want a fairly thick consistency when you're making something like pot pie. And I think we're good. This is the consistency that I want. You want it to be extremely thick. I'm gonna go ahead and bring this down to a complete simmer on the lowest heat possible and just let it hang out. Look at how nice that is now. That is absolutely gorgeous. That is what you want when you're doing pot pie. We're gonna do a pinch of salt and I think that's it. I do have one final secret ingredient, za'atar. If you've never had za'atar before, I highly recommend you go out somewhere and find it. It's a spice blend of sesame seeds, salt, black pepper, sumac, oregano, thyme, and a few other things like basil and oregano. We're gonna be putting this on the pita as well as on the top of this roti naan. Just give it that little bit of much needed love. So here comes the moment of truth. And just in case, we're gonna bake this onto another sheet tray. You're gonna take a very, oh, look at, look at, this. Look at it. Very generous portion of your pot pie. Then we're going to take our chilled bread, lay it right over the top. We have to be quick with this. So this way it doesn't actually hold too much moisture on the inside. Once we have our curry inside of our dish, we're actually going to put a little bit of water on the outside of the dish. This will help the dough stick. We set it for nine minutes. I hope it works. Well, it's a little dark. I went for the nine minute mark on this, and I will say it is a little crispy, but the dough it's actually isn't burnt. You can see the inside of the bread is actually a really nice texture and color, but the outside did get a little bit dark because I haven't actually baked bread in this oven before. And it's pretty good. All right, well, here goes nothing. I'm gonna go for this. So hot. Oh, so good, it's so hot. <clears throat> oh, that's good. Oh, that's really good. Okay. So unfortunately we didn't get that beautiful domed puff like we were going for like Hayama had in the show. The reason for that is layers. Puff pastry actually has layers of dough and butter interlaced within each other to create that really beautiful puffed shape and that really nice crispy texture. With naan, you really need a high heat oven with almost no moisture. With the moisture coming up from the actual pot pie, you can see this thing is still steaming. You're not able to really get that crispiness. Is it still good? Absolutely. Am I gonna finish this? Yeah. Am I gonna turn the rest of that into pot pie? Probably not. All in all, I'm still glad I was able to try this and I'm still glad you guys were a part of this. I can't wait to make more food from Food Wars. My name is Chef PK here on Chef Paul Makes. Get subscribed and remember, keep playing with your food. You could hear us was better. Hot, hot.